I'm back. Did you know I was gone? You didn't know I was gone. You might have known I was gone if you follow my Instagram or Twitter, I suppose, but I did keep things pretty seamless over here on YouTube. But anyway, I am back from Key West, and I returned to a 40-degree winter where the sun goes down at 4.30 in the afternoon, and I hate it uh, a lot. So today I'm going to shake up a bit of the local flavor from Key West here on HTD. <laughs> So I was down in Key West for a little bit there, it was very nice, would recommend, and as you walk around town, well, specifically as you walk up and down Duval Street, uh, there's all these to-go bars selling an alcoholic slushie that they call a rum runner. You scroll up, plunk down 10 or $12, and go on your merry way sipping frozen, high-proof, sugared-up booze. And, uh, well, here's what I found out down there. Roll the footage. They call this a rum runner. It tastes like um, the icy truck, the Italian ice truck when I was a kid. Like bubblegum flavored. Like a bubblegum flavored Italian ice. Very sweet. It's not good, but I can't stop drinking it. It's a terrible cocktail, but it's delicious. Let's get another rum runner. Can you get a uh, rum runner and a pineapple, please? This thing is insane. It's not very good, no. It is ridiculous. It is totally insane. It's very sweet. It's drinkable. I understand there's booze in it. I can't taste it. I wouldn't say it's a good cocktail, but I mean, it is what you expect. It's not her fault at all. I mean, this is the recipe, you know? Let's see if we can make it better. Oh, that vacation, Greg. Never get enough of that guy. No, seriously. Let's have some more of that guy, please. I never did wind up finding a great rum runner. I mean, I assume it's possible that there's a spot there that's making some kind of elevated, blow your mind rum runner somewhere on the island, but it eluded me. And by the way, if that's you, if that's your bar, let me let me know if I missed you. I'll, I'll be back. I'll hit you up then. <laughs> but really though, like the elevated rum runner is not even in the rum runner's character. Because as near as I can tell, the Rum Runner was invented at the Holiday Isle Tiki Bar on Isla Mirada, uh, which is a few miles up the Oversea Highway from Key West, if you're not familiar, in the 50s to help a bartender by the name of Tiki John unload a bunch of liqueurs he had no other profitable use for. He just wanted to get rid of a bunch of stuff and throw it all together, and he named it a Rum Runner in honor of the Rum Runners who worked out of the Florida Keys through Prohibition. I think there's definitely variation from bar to bar as to how they make their local Rum Runner at that particular spot, but generally, you'll be looking at pineapple juice, orange juice, two different rums, um, at least, sometimes three, and also banana and blackberry liqueurs. The banana and blackberry combo is kind of key. That's like super specific to this drink, and you can't skip that. You will find that in every rum runner you have. They all taste that way. If we're looking for sort of a standard baseline recipe, I think we can look at the recipe from the Postcard Inn. That is the current name of the Holiday Isle Tiki Bar and Hotel. And theirs goes like this. It's two cups of ice, one ounce of pineapple juice, one ounce of orange juice, one ounce of blackberry liqueur, one ounce of banana liqueur, one ounce of light rum, one ounce of dark rum, meaningless terms, a splash of grenadine, and an ounce of Bacardi 151 to float on top of the with an orange slice. I, I think that you can't really get Bacardi 151 anymore, so maybe they, they probably swapped that. I don't know. Uh, it's also an ounce is a big float. That's a large float. Take all that, throw that in a blender, and serve it in a, uh, you know, like a hurricane glass or something like that, and enjoy. And I asked around when I was down there. I think everybody else was pretty much using that recipe here pretty close to it. It's equal parts, an absurd quantity of rum, and a splash of grenadine for color. Well, now that we've got that out of the way, I have to say, even though it's not in the drink's character, there's a part of me that wants to know, what would a really good top-notch rum runner look like? What if I were to just, like, take this drink and try to, like, elevate it to something that, like, might, might have some place in the classic Tiki Pantheon? I don't really know. I'm gonna try that right now, right here today, after this. I'm gonna build this drink a bit backwards. I'm gonna start with my rum. So I want something with a bit of tang on it, and I'd love Barbacore 8 Ear. This is a, it's a stuck bottle. <laughs> Hasn't been opened in a minute. I've been away for over a month. Anyway, this has got some kick. It's got a little funk. All right, one ounce of the rum barbancourt. Now I'm gonna use this ounce of Appleton Estate 12 year. I originally was thinking about going with like an Eldorado to bring in some Demerara. We can get that in the float if we go that way with the 151 from Lemonheart. This has that Jamaican kind of funk to it, but it's really mellowed out at 12 years old. This is really more of a sipping rum. The combination of these rums will stand up, I think, to all these fruit juices that we're about to add to it, all these fruity flavors. If you just pulled out 
you know, quote, light and dark Bacardi or something like that. By the time you're done adding all this stuff to it, you will not have any indication of that rum flavor at all. They just don't stand up to it. Light and dark, not good classifications of rum. You know, you gotta think about what the still is and what's the distillate, because whether it's got high molasses or no molasses, fresh pressed sugar cane, a demerara, you know, like a, something that's been cooked, or if it's in a pot still or a column still, all of those things are gonna make much bigger difference than the color of the rum. Now moving on to the juices, doing things way out of order. I think that it makes sense to have both pineapple and orange juices. I fresh squeeze this from a pineapple. I'm gonna go with one whole ounce of that. And now I'm going to use an orange and I'm going to squeeze half an ounce of orange. The original spec calls for one whole ounce. Um, I wanna cut the orange back a little bit. Orange can be overpowering. You don't think of it that way. It is, in cocktails, orange juice really can take over. It's tough to balance it. I think it makes sense to have it there. I like the idea of having kind of a rum punch sort of thing going on here with all these different fruits and stuff like that. But I wanna balance it a little bit. I honestly, I think that the orange could push the pineapple around. You can lose the pineapple for the orange. The orange is a louder flavor. I don't know if that makes sense to other people. It does make sense to me. And it must make sense to you. I mean, you're watching me, unless you just hate watching me. Are you doing that? That's weird. But thank you for the engagement. Okay. Some of you are hate watching me, I'm sure. One half ounce of very fresh orange juice. Perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you. That brings me to the banana liqueur. Tempest Fugit makes a very nice banana liqueur. Um, that's gonna be my go-to for this drink. How much should I use? I know the standard recipe calls for equal parts, um, but I think that cutting the banana liqueur back to three quarters of an ounce is gonna help me here. It's a big flavor banana. I don't think too many other things are gonna compete with banana. Like they don't occupy the same frequencies on your taste buds, if that makes any sense. So like a little will go a long way. But that said, the Tempest Fugit, which is a little bit more natural, I think, has a much more subtle flavor, is not the same thing as like that electric, artificial, in your face banana flavor that you might find in another banana liqueur. I cut it back but I don't cut it way back to like a quarter ounce or a bar spoon or something like that. That brings me to the blackberry liqueur, and I don't wanna add another liqueur in this drink. I think one fruit liqueur is enough. Adding blackberry liqueur will add a lot of syrupy sweetness I would rather control. Also, based on some comments, and if I'm not talking to you, I'm not talking to you, but some of you seem to think that liquor and liqueur are like the same words, or that like liqueur is a fancy pronunciation of liquor. That ain't true. Liqueur is stuff that's like under 80 proof that's got a lot of sugar added to it, sweetened, and actually at some point, I think it's like, it's gotta be 30% sugar by weight or something. Then it becomes a cream, so creme de banane. That's very sweet. All these things are liqueurs, E-U-E-R, or U-E-U, or whatever. Different than liquor, so. I'm not just saying liquor fancy. Liqueur is a different thing. Anyway, I'd rather control my sweetness a bit, and if I want to sweeten it up, I can with some sugar. That, and I'm also not Tiki John, who's just looking to get rid of unsellable bottles. I'm trying to build a better rum runner. So instead of blackberry liqueur, which I did bring, but I'm not gonna use, I'm just gonna go with fresh blackberries. And I'm gonna just place, I don't know, four of them in the shaker. I think that'll be more than enough. Um, and I'm gonna eat two. Um, we don't need to muddle those because shaking is gonna break them up just fine. The next thing is that this drink calls for a splash of grenadine. I'm actually gonna hold off on that for now. The drink is also normally served over crushed ice or really actually not even crushed ice, but just blended so it's a slushy. You can try it that way if you want. I wanna serve this up in a coupe. Uh, I think the pineapple juice is gonna give this a lovely frothy head. We're gonna see how that looks. Two ice cubes, I will leave one hole and I will crack the other one. Also, the typical recipe calls for a splash of grenadine. I, they must be adding that for color. You would never taste a splash of grenadine in here. It's gonna be gone. I see no reason to bother with it. So let's go. For garnish, I wanna pull a couple of pineapple fronds here off of my pineapple and a blackberry. All right, and there we have a rum runner, hopefully elevated. Yeah. Ooh, that is not bad. It is less sweet by far than the drinks that were being served and called rum runners in Florida. It tastes way fresher and also earthier, like that the banane, the banane, the, the combination of this banana with the fresh blackberries. It tastes like we've invented a new kind of fruit, if that makes any sense. Like they don't taste artificial, but they also taste somewhat unfamiliar. I'm pretty happy with that. It has like sort of earthiness to it that I wasn't actually expecting, but I find appreciable. I like that. I enjoy that. Uh, the pineapple's providing sweetness is slightly buried in some of these flavors. The orange juice is providing sweetness and a little bit of citrus there as well. Kind of helps bring it all together. The combination of those, I think I smell something burning. Or I'm having a stroke. Could be happening. Could happen anytime. You never know. Lovely. 
My head hurts, so. Mm. It's interesting. It has like that citrus sweet tart opening and then the banana kind of takes hold and steers it into this like very subdued and earthy place. The rum is not lost, but it's also not distinct. You're getting this kind of synthesis of flavors. It has a long evolution. It is still working in my mouth. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the choices of rum here. A lot of that, that pot still rum brings a lot of these esters, that kind of stuff can linger and hang out. I think that they are kind of combining with the banana, with the blackberry in particular, and producing this new kind of flavor. It is fruity without being super sweet at all. It's way less sweet. It feels somewhat sophisticated in your hand, but yeah, it does taste very much reminiscent of those Duval Street rum runners. But like, if you were to put that in someone's hand and say, but this is what a rum runner is supposed to taste like, they would say, oh yeah, of course, I could see that. That's what I was going for. And I think I did it. I'm pretty happy with that. Pleased with myself. Yeah, so the recipes online call for, you know, a float of 151. We can do that. I have a funny feeling that's gonna really overpower this drink. We're adding a small pour of very high proof spirits to the top of this, but honestly, it might work. It might actually kind of wake it up a bit too. So I'll give it a shot. You can see it working its way across, eating all the bubbles, which is kind of fun to watch. It's just like destroying my uh, pineapple foam, but let's see how that is. Ah, that's not bad. I might even improve it a little bit. I kind of like that that way. Do it with a little float, just like not, a, not an ounce, that's crazy. Maybe a quarter ounce of the Lemon Heart 151. That adds an extra kick of this brown sugar note. It is adding another dimension to this drink that is not overpowering and is welcome. Very small float though, very small. I mean, quarter ounce, I think, maybe half an ounce at most. Thank you for watching me make a uh, elevated rum runner. I don't know, like, I don't know if I'm good at the travelogue stuff. And honestly, even walking around Key West with a little selfie camera filming myself, I had a lot of drunks trying to jump in between my stick and my face and, and call me an asshole for filming anything. So I don't know if I want to subject myself to that kind of abuse. I just don't know. If there are more local drinks from local places that you want me to check out, let me know in the comments what you think I should make. Uh, you know, if you've got like a favorite spot, a thing that your area is known for, we should do it on the show, maybe, uh, if it's good. And if it's bad, we should do it. That'd be fun. Bad ones, good ones, some as big as your head. I don't know why I went in there. Until then, you can uh, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> I'm told it's all the rage. Check out my social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and other places. And I've been making the show for a really long time. So behold, these other episodes. But the, I think the most important thing you can do if you want to support a YouTuber you like is to watch your show and hear some more episodes. And I, I, I know you haven't seen them all. Maybe a few of you have, but a lot of you haven't. I mean, there's a lot of these. Well, if, you, if you've all seen them all, wouldn't they all have the same view count? They would. Get to work. Let's make that happen. Okay? No. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon with another episode of HTD. Wish I had a pencil-thin mustache.